I'm Lizzie Dastin. Welcome to another session of Sidewalk School. We are in the Rampart District, right by the Gabba Gallery, in front of the biggest stencil work by Thrashbird that is in LA. One of the reasons why I think Thrashbird is so significant is because of his versatility. He does this clone, but he also does so many other stencils that really speak to lots of key issues that we are grappling with in society. Sometimes they're political, sometimes they're cultural, often they're humorous. Sometimes the way that he transforms and utilizes the urban space is just plain creative and clever. The work behind us is significant because it introduces elements of pop culture, but not in an overt pop art kind of way. Those two things are really different, and often there's some crossover in between, but Thrashbird is not a pop artist. He will sometimes incorporate aspects of popular culture, but in order to perpetuate some kind of message that he's hoping to express. This work, for instance, is culled from a 1974 expose on graffiti that was written by Norman Mailer photographed by Jean-Paul Goud and published in Esquire magazine. This is a really early example of graffiti entering into the mainstream. Something that I think that he does in this work that's really interesting is that he doesn't just take the cover image as an isolated photograph. He basically recreates the entire magazine cover in this large-scale mural format using a stencil. Notice that the background exhibits these patches of other colors. If an artist is working Renegade with a stencil and that work is covered over by the city, the city will use this hideous silver paint to buff out the image of the artist. Thrashbird is utilizing that aesthetic in the wall, kind of creating this layered history and referencing the practice of graffiti writers communicating themselves and then the government or some sort of systemic power Xing that out with their silver paint and then somebody else writing on top of it. So it really is very, very layered and that's not the way that Thrashbird encountered the wall. The wall itself was totally clean, but he wanted there to be that nuance. So he wrote on the wall, then covered it up, then wrote in other patches and then buffed himself and then applied the stencil. Transforming this wall into an homage to graffiti using the language of graffiti and using that system of artists and writers expressing themselves and then somehow being censored and then expressing themselves on top of it. That's just another example of how sensitive and thoughtful and very complex the work of Thrashbird is. I'm Lizzie, and this has been another session of Sidewalk School.